I'm glad you could join me. I'm in the book of Genesis today, in Genesis chapter 35. Now this is a story that's kind of a hodgepodge of different stories all put together. It's, it's several different ideas that are all kind of summarized there, and it's kind of like the, uh, the junk drawer at your, uh, at your house, perhaps in your kitchen or in your, in your shop. It's kind of like the, um, uh, the um, well, the, the junk drawer is the best way to say it. This particular chapter just continue, uh, gives us strains of a lot of the different stories and brings, ties up, brings to a conclusion some of those things. So we have the death of Isaac here, and we have the, uh, the sin of Reuben here, and we have Jacob going back to Bethel and establishing that particular city and community. So a lot of different things in this particular chapter. Now I'd like for us to focus actually on verse 4 of this particular chapter. For as God calls Jacob and says, go back to Bethel, this was the place where when Jacob was fleeing from Esau, he stopped for the night and had a dream and there was the ladder. And we sing the children's song, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. And that's the vision that he had. And he said, surely God is in this place. And so God calls him back to that location. And he says, I want to meet you there. And so now Jacob is more than just himself. Now he's his whole household. Now he has servants. Now he has flocks and, and different uh, types of herds. And so he brings them all. But before they go, excuse me, he, he tells them to set aside all of the foreign gods that they have. Listen to how the English Standard Version says it. So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods that they had and the rings that were in their ears. Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree that was near Shechem. Now, <clears throat> when we get rid of foreign gods, typically the proper way to do that is to burn them. And we find that in the New Testament where they, uh, where they bring the, uh, the books of magic to Paul and, uh, and he burns them. And that's the way they typically get rid of uh, anything connected to idolatry and to the occult. But in this particular case, I find it interesting that Jacob hid them underneath the terebinth tree, or I guess it's their version of an oak tree. And, and I always wonder about that. To be honest with you, I don't have an answer. But I, I know that there is this, this tendency in human experience to, um, to hide gods rather than to get rid of gods. There's a tendency to put them aside for a time while we focus upon the true and living God, but then we come back to them. Now, I don't believe that's what God intends. I don't believe that that's what he teaches. In fact, if, you're, if you follow, ever follow the Passover, one of the things that the uh, Jews are supposed to do before, as they prepare for the Passover is the search for the chametz, the leaven that's in the house. And so mom goes through all the cupboards and pulls out anything that might have any yeast or leaven in it, and she is supposed to get rid of it entirely. Dad comes along with a feather duster, and he sweeps up the last little bit and takes, takes credit for doing that, but we know who really did it. Now, the problem with that is that if you got rid of all of that leaven before Passover, it would be a very expensive thing to replace. Leaven's not wrong in itself, but this is a symbol of sin in our lives. And so as the, as the wives, the Jewish wives, complained about how now it's going to cost us so much to replace that, the rabbis came up with an ingenious solution. And they said, gather all of those things together and sell them to your gen uh, Gentile neighbor next door for a dollar. And then after Passover, go buy that, that leaven back. Everything that you sold him for a dollar, 
buy it back, hopefully for the same dollar, and you're no, no the wiser. Well, that may work symbolically, but in reality, that's what we tend to do with sin in our lives. Jacob was called to meet the Lord himself, but instead of getting rid of all of the idols, he set them aside for a time. He hid them, just like oftentimes we do. And, that's, and, and I don't believe that's what God had in mind. I believe that the God that we worship, who is revealed in Christ, is the one that wants us to set all of those idols and burn them get rid of them, cast them all, uh, uh, eliminate them from our lives completely so that he himself is first and has the first place. I don't know how to understand Genesis 35 here. I don't know why God uh, came and met Jacob and revealed himself to Jacob in a very special way. But I, but I do know that if our intent is to go back and restore the idolatry of our lives, it doesn't please him. And that appears to be what Jacob was planning to do. But I can't say that for sure. Father, I ask you to help us to live our lives before you, where you are the only God that we serve. There's no other God that we would put aside for a time and then come back to. But rather, I pray that you would help us to see you as the one who is completely and always sufficient for our needs. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.